Hey, it's Alicia from Mobility Mastery, and we've got Fast Fashion Effects Episode 6. Had to get that right this week because I'm pretty sure I messed it up like the last two times. I'm horrible at math. I can't even count, apparently. Uh, so the way that this works is I'm just going to run through three facts about fascia. Then I'm going to actually take some liberties, extrapolate, give you my theories about why I think this is super important, implications for your well-being and health and healing potential. Uh, and then I always love hearing from you. So if you have any, you know, personal particular takeaways, uh, I would love for you to share that below this video uh, when we're done. So number one here is fascia is composed in part of something called the ECM, which stands for the extracellular matrix. And the ECM contains critical nutrients that your body needs to thrive, but not only thrive, heal. So if you want to heal faster than you injure, this is a critical thing to learn about. So I'm gonna circle back around and get to my theories uh, after I go through them all. So number two is the ECM that lives in your gut is part of the protective lining for your immune system. And this has system-wide implications for health and healing because of that gut-brain barrier and the gut-brain connection. And number three, the ECM is like the fiber optic network of your body and it facilitates all kinds of critical communications between not just your brain and body and your mind and your body, but also between cell, like cell to cell communication as well as say fascia to muscle communication and so much more. So I'm not gonna go crazy in depth on any of the science here. I encourage you to look this up for yourself. We're just kind of covering the facts really quickly. And now I'm going to uh, extract from this what I believe feels really important for my own uh, mind-body healing and then optimizing my potential. And then what I've seen with clients that feels critical to share with you. So you can hopefully take this information, use it and heal faster or optimize for either athletic performance or your best life, whatever that means for you. So, the uh, obviously this fascia facts is all about the ecm so each of these three has to do with the ecm i put them together like this because i want you to kind of think about it systemically even though there are three things to think about differently when it comes to the ecm so your whole body contains extracellular matrix material and it's made out of glycoproteins and uh, enzymes and other critical nutrients that you need to repair tissues, to regenerate at the cellular level, to heal. Um, and really the number one thing I want to extract from this or lesson that we can all learn is that when we have a really healthy or optimized ECM, we're going to probably heal faster than we injure. And I just got to say that like, it's not as simple as that, you know, there are other components that go into um, healing rapidly, which have to do maybe more with your mental state and how much stress you're under. Um, but these things affect the ECM. So the ECM lives within that fascial matrix. If you've ever watched like some of the magnified fascia videos that are on YouTube, um, I highly encourage you to watch them. I think there's a really great one out there that's only a minute and a half and it's like fascia magnetized times 25, I think, <laughs> something like that. Um, but it's pretty fascinating because you can actually see the water and the, um, the liquid part of that fascial network. And it's really that part that is the ECM. So you want to optimize that ECM in a couple of ways. So whenever you compress fascia or tissue anywhere in your body, uh, I'm not even talking about shearing yet, but when you compress it, you're naturally going to start to push out or squeeze out uh, old toxic waste living in your ECM. So the e ECM um, does two things. It not only houses those critical nutrients, but it actually takes waste from the cells. So the cells excrete their waste into the, the ECM and then through that fascial and lymph system, which is in the super, superficial fascia, uh, your body is gonna try to move it out 
uh, of your body, right? So it can get excreted numerous ways through the skin, through sweating, um, through pee, through poop, right? Uh, all those elimination, elimination pathways. Um, so just the compression is going to do some of that. So any fascia release modality or self-help technique that you do, if it involves a good compression, is going to start squeezing out the old waste and allow new material to come in. And that new material is gonna be blood flow, um, it's gonna be water, you might end up synthesizing some you know, uh, fibroblasts or activating fibroblasts that synthesize some collagen. So you might get some collagen production, uh, you might get some hyaluronic acid production, you might start um, getting more water into that ECM. And all of those ingredients are necessary for uh, repair and healing. And then you want a good store of critical nutrients that your body can draw from at any time so that if you get injured or if you are stressed or if an area is in more need than it is on a consistent basis, you have the necessary ingredients to heal fast. So you can imagine that, you know, let's say you haven't been doing fascia release. Maybe you never have. Maybe you've never even gotten massages or you've had very little compression to your system, to that soft tissue system. Um, and then you end up with an injury like uh, a knee injury, an ACL tear or some elbow tendonitis. Well, your body may have a difficult time healing that if there aren't ready nutrients in that ECM. So then you end up in a scenario, raise your hand if this is you, um, where you are injured for a long time, where maybe you've taken to Google or you've gone to a doctor and they say, well, normally a sprained ankle takes six weeks to heal. By the way, I think you can heal it a lot faster than six weeks, but let's say you heard that the average person takes six weeks to heal a sprained ankle. And for some reason you're on like week eight or nine or 10, and it's still not where you want it to be. You still feel some pain there. It's still irritating you. It could be because your ECM is not where it needs to be in terms of containing the critical nutrients and then those pathways being open where whatever, you know, whether it's an Achilles tendon or uh, ligaments and tendons in the ankle, whatever it is, right? Or the elbow uh, that needs those nutrients isn't getting it. And then it's not healing fast. I believe, so this is my, you know, where I'm like taking some liberty to theorize. I theorize that the more optimized we can get our fascial system, the faster we can heal from just about anything. And in fact, something like a sprained ankle could be addressed within a matter of minutes, potentially, like a 45 minute session with someone like me, um, where they, you know, my clients have actually walked out, where they walked in with a boot and they had just sprained their ankle the day before. Um, so that's pretty miraculous, right? Like I believe mir miracles can happen when we actually get to know the body and then assist the body to do what it does naturally, but even better, right? When we actually take the time to optimize. So I hope that's making sense. All right. So number two, uh, I'm going to get a little sciencey here and I kind of always forget this. So I did have to go look at my notes just now, but, um, the ECM that lives in your gut is part of your gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissue or GALT. And if you've ever heard of leaky gut syndrome, if you've ever, ever heard of your gut lining and maybe you've listened to Zach Bush or other people talk about that barrier, that really, really, really thin barrier that exists between our immune system and the world, it's really thin, that is made up in part of the ECM in your gut. Uh, so critical implications here for all kinds of things, including leaky gut, uh, detoxing properly, and then of course the gut brain barrier and any relationship really between the gut and the brain. Um, so mental health stuff like anxiety and um, you know, even, even other mental health things like depression and hormone imbalances and stuff like that can absolutely be due to uh, something being off in this part of the gut. So I definitely believe, I'm gonna take some liberties here. So these are my beliefs, these are my theories. Um, I would love to prove them. 
the way that I prove them with myself is with my clients and I gather data over years and years. Um, but I believe that we can use fascia release in the gut to repair some of that lining to um, similar to here, if you think about this, like the gut is actually, it's different than the rest of our body, but it's also not that different. So you have muscles here. Yes, we have organs, um, but we have a lot of muscle here too. Uh, we have a lot of fascia. We have a lot of nerves here and we can get fascially adhesed in the gut. In fact, a lot of people, like almost everybody I know um, or work with has stuff going on in the gut. And so if you have a lot of gut fascial adhesions, uh, what do you think that might do to the blood flow and the nerve communication that really needs to be happening here for your organs to function properly and that brain gut um, pathway to be like clear and not clogged. Uh, so I think there are huge implications here. So I would definitely uh, encourage you to consider regardless of digestive issues or if you think you have leaky gut to explore your abdomen. Um, I think that if like I always say, if I could pick one area to release on anybody for pain, uh, it would be the quad hip flexors for head to toe issues because uh, the quad hip flexors affect the hips to an extent that it can cause hip pain, back pain, knee pain, carpal tunnel, uh, shoulder issues, uh, plantar fasciitis, I mean, you name it. Now, there are definitely other factors as well, but if you forced me to pick one technique, it would be that one. But for overall human health, or well-being, meaning your mind-body connection, putting you in contact with a part of yourself that has the most um, potential for optimizing your well-being, it would be your gut. So I would have you release your gut fascia. So definitely something to consider. We'll link to the uh, abdominal self fascia release for um, this fascia here um, below this video for you. Uh, but I would love to hear if you, if you resonate with this one, because so many people these days have leaky gut syndrome, or maybe like me, you're trying to detox right now. And this is like a part of your immune system. It's a part of the pathway for toxins to move out. Uh, maybe there's something going on, you know, between the gut and the brain. So let me know in the comments below if you resonate with this one and tell me that you're going to go do that gut fascia release, or if you've already tried it, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and then number three, uh, the ECM is like the fiber optic network of your body. Um, so I guess I also want to say that this is being said by people other than me, including fascia researchers, and it could potentially be construed as a personal opinion and maybe not fact. Um, so I just want to say that some of these are like irrefutable, like scientifically validated facts and other ones are generally, um, like there's a general consensus of it within, you know, the field of fascia research. Um, but you can go watch videos, um, like that fascia magnified video and actually see the fiber optic network. You can see those fascial fibers getting kind of pulled apart. Um, you can see the watery part of it. And there's so much that needs to happen between your brain and your body, between your consciousness and your body, your energy, and your body, but then also between all the different systems of your body. And I believe that communication happens mostly through the fascial system uh, via the ECM. So in order for that ECM to facilitate all of these critical communications, it has to have a high water content. Water is really one of the fastest ways to send a message. Um, you know, they've I'm going to probably botch this from a scientific standpoint, but I know they've done studies on, um, you know, like sonar and how fast sound travels in water, for instance. And it's like very, very, very fast. So I believe communication happens largely through the waterways of our body. Um, and, and then assists communication between across the body, right? Between other systems. So cell to cell communication. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier, we have uh, the communication that needs to happen between the fascial system and ECM and your muscles and your joints and the rest of your body. Uh, so to me, like the exciting, uh, you know, 
I guess, future field that maybe some of us will start exploring more that I like talking about now is the implications here for raising human consciousness, making ourselves more water than material, like optimizing, optimizing our water content and becoming a little less dense, a little less fibrous. And what could that do to assist in raising human con consciousness so that thoughts can travel rapidly and epiphanies can happen faster and we can sense things easier and better and faster, right? We can have that sixth or seventh sense organ. So some people are calling the fascial system a sensory organ, a, like a proprioceptive organ. I believe it's more than that actually, uh, because it's involved not only in proprioception, but also interoception and exteroception. So I believe it's also the, um, if you want to call it organ, cool, but I would say more, it's like the system with which we um, gather data about, like sense the world and our place in it, and then make meaning out of that and then dictate behavior. So there's so much happening with the communication here. And the more you optimize it and get that water content in there, the faster your brain and body are gonna communicate and the systems of your body can communicate with each other. So this one gets us a little into that like woo woo territory, um, getting a little metaphysical, um, whereas these are a bit more tangible in the physical uh, sense. But I would love to hear one takeaway from you that really stands out for you and your body right now and your mind body connection, like which one of these three really lit you up? Which one are you gonna, are you gonna take action on? Um, and how do you see that optimizing your life? like helping you live your best life and feel at home in your own body. So I'd love to hear from you below. That's this week's Fast Fashion Facts. And I'll see you next time.